If you're new to Precise, chances are that you want to couple your solver with OpenFoam. My name is Gerasimus Kourdakis, and I want to give you a quick overview of the Precise OpenFoam adapter and some news from 2020. For an extended overview, you can look at my training session at the OpenFoam Workshop 2020, which I also list at the end. First of all, what is the OpenFoam adapter and what can it do? An adapter is the glue code between the solver and Precise. In case of OpenFoam, it is a function object, so a plugin that we can load at runtime without recompiling the solver, and this um, function object links to the library Precise. It has the following tasks. First of all, it needs to read uh, new values from Precise and apply them to the right places in OpenFoam. Similarly, it needs to be able to extract boundary values from OpenFoam and pass them to Precise. In implicit coupling, the adapter needs to be able to tell OpenFoam to redo an iteration, meaning to go back in time. And for this, it needs to keep checkpoints, so to store the complete uh, solution for a specific time and reload it in the future. Then, it also needs to be able to adjust the time step of OpenFoam in case Precise tells us that we need to slow down. How do we configure this? You have already seen in the Precise course the XML Precise configuration file in the middle. For every adapter, we also have an additional configuration file which essentially tells how the meshes of Precise relate to the patches of the solver, and a few more technical details. In case of uh, Calculix, this is, for example, a YAML file. In the case of the OpenFoam adapter, this also used to be a YAML file in the past, but now is an OpenFoam dictionary, similar to the rest of the configuration files of OpenFoam you already know. What does this dictionary contain? First of all, it uh, points to the precise configuration file. Then it uh, uh, tells it that this solver is actually the fluid participant as uh, declared also in the precise configuration file. And in case of open foam, it also uh, needs to specify what kind of problem it needs to, to, to couple because uh, the OpenFoam adapter provides different uh, coupling data users, different features that we can enable and disable on demand. Then we need to specify the coupling interfaces. Its interface relates a mesh of precise to patches and data that we read and write. In this case, we specify two interfaces. The one interface is the fluid mesh faces, which uh, relates to the patch flap. In the OpenFoam adapter, we can have uh, coupled uh, locations both on face centers and on face nodes. Here we write forces on the center of the faces. We also have a second interface, which is very similar, but is defined on the face nodes of the flap. There, we read displacements. At the end, we may also need to provide some uh, physics-related uh, values, for example, the density, because here we are coupling an incompressible solver. Now, when you work with the OpenFoam adapter, you will probably want to look at the documentation. Here you can find, first of all, what this adapter can do. In short, it can do conjugate heat transfer, fluid structure interaction with different uh, variables, and uh, it can also now do fluid-fluid coupling, which is work in progress. You can find out how to try it, how to start. You can find the video that I mentioned in the beginning and a reference that you can read more inside. In order to get the adapter, 
you get the latest state from the repository. Unfortunately, we don't yet have proper releases. This is something we need to do after we agree on a versioning scheme and how to support different OpenFOAM versions. You can find out more details on how this configuration file looks like and how to set uh, the right boundary conditions and how to load the OpenFOAM adapter. And then in the page extending, you can find how you can actually extend the OpenFOAM adapter for your own needs. Originally, the adapter supported only conjugate heat transfer, then uh, it was extended for fluid traction interaction, and now also for fluid-fluid coupling. Several people have uh, also added different functionality in their own forks, for example, for volume coupling, um, or now for multi-phase fluid-fluid coupling. And uh, with your help, we can merge some of this functionality in the main line of code. At the end, you can find a section on which OpenFOAM versions we support. Overall, we try to support the latest uh, versions of both the ESI and the OpenFOAM Foundation versions. However, as you will see uh, in a minute, it uh, is easier if you just get the latest ESI version. In the documentation, you can also find several tutorials for conjugate heat transfer, for fluid structure interaction, or in the developed branch for fluid-fluid coupling. Now, for those of you that have seen the adapter in the past, I would like to give you some news. First of all, something that uh, we worked in the past year, and unfortunately we are still working on, is how to support multiple open phone versions with the same code. You may have seen that if you get, for example, a recent version of the OpenFOAM Foundation, you get a note that you need to switch to a different branch. Why is this? This is because often uh, the, the latest OpenFOAM Foundation releases introduce breaking changes that also affect the adapter. What does this mean? This means that uh, in the code, where we were calling, for example, a method called set delta t with a specific number of arguments, it uh, changes to a different uh, name. For example, set delta t no adjusts with different arguments. As a developer, uh, I know which one to use for its open phone version, but this is difficult to uh, transfer into code. Now, OpenFOAM also, also uses, um, also includes specific implementation files uh, in the middle of the implementation. Normally in C++ you wouldn't do this, you would only have, uh, you would only include header files in the beginning. However, uh, since OpenFOAM does this, we thought this is maybe a good solution where we would maintain version-specific files in separate directories and then um, load them at compile time. What does this mean? In this case, we would have, for example, the set delta t file that would specify the line of code I showed you before. And then for different uh, versions, we would have different files. If a version provides the same file, we would just link to the, to the previous implementation of the same. If a version is completely the same, then we would just link the complete version. As you can imagine, there can be many different files uh, as the versions diverge more and more. And uh, something nice to see here would be that all of the latest uh, ESI versions can work with the same uh, code. So this is something that in principle could work, but does it solve the maintainability issue? Probably not very much, because if we look at OpenFOAM 8, um, the, the changes are now several. And uh, this 
seems to be not the right way to go. An alternative was recently proposed by Thomas Enziger for conjugate fee transfer on GitHub. What he proposes there is to move all the code related to, to boundary conditions to an open form boundary condition. And this is a nice uh, open form native design. A boundary condition would need to be provided together with the code and compiled separately, which would make it a bit more complicated for, for the user in the beginning, but would make the code uh, easier to maintain. However, still inside there, we need to, to have some special cases for different open form versions. This is uh, doable, this is nicer, it is a large uh, redesign of the adapter, but still raises the question, is this realistic that we actually support all the different open form versions with the same code, since the two versions don't really synchronize anymore. Then I would like to point you to some uh, pull requests, mainly by David Schneider, that are worth looking at. First of all, we now uh, get the incompressible or uh, compressible type of the solver using the dimensions of the pressure, which is the nice open form way to go. Then uh, we can now also write stresses, which is an advantage since we don't need to use conservative mapping. And this, this makes it easier to use um, open form together with solvers that don't support uh, reading forces, but only stresses. And this was in the beginning TL2. And another important uh, change is that we, we improved the 2D mode. What was the problem here? Before, uh, we were only able to read point displacements over face nodes and then forces over face centers. Now, if we do this in 2D, we get one layer for forces, but uh, two layers of identical values for displacements. This makes the RBF mapping system uh, unstable. And for this, we extended the adapter to be able to read cell displacements on face centers. And this means that we now read one layer of displacements and write one layer of forces and the uh, RBF mapping can now easily converge. In the future, what we really need uh, is to extend the continuous integration that we already have with system tests so that it also includes uh, unit and integration tests. We have already a quite old prototype uh, that uses cuts to and Google test for this, but um, we need to look deeper into this. If you want to contribute, you are very welcome. Now, if you want to, to learn more, I have given similar talks in uh, previous open form workshops. And in particular, you may be interested in the recorded uh, training session in the Open Form Workshop 2020 that you can find on YouTube, or you may want to come to the next one in June. I would like also to refer you to, to my thesis where the general design is, um, is described. And to conclude, I would like to tell you that what you, you, what you can remember is that Open Form can do a lot with Precise, and uh, it can do even more if you extend it. However, it needs your contribution to move further, not only with uh, code changes, but also with helping us test and review the suggested changes. My name is Gerasmus Kurdakis. You can write me via email or you can start a thread in our forum. Thank you very much for watching.